Hello, I'm Marlow from Wild Food UK. Uh, we're out foraging again. It's late in October, I think it's the 27th. And we're in Shropshire and we've got a little selection of mushrooms here to show you. These are the kind of mushrooms that you should be finding at this time of year. Um, first of all, down here, we've got some mushrooms that we actually picked in the woods not too far away. These are wood bluets. First indication that you've got a wood bluet is this beautiful colour underneath the cap and the stem having the same sort of violet to purple colouring. These are all slightly faded, you will find them much more purple, much more sort of vibrant coloured. This one's older and you can see that the gills have gone lighter. The cap is always this kind of purple colour, sort of lilac-y purple and it will lighten through to this kind of light I suppose lilac with hints of brown on top of it will colour later and certainly if it dries out. It's, um, it's been reasonably warm this October. It's probably about 19 degrees where we are at the moment um, and that's unseasonably warm. These mushrooms far prefer it in the cold so they would normally get bigger than this before they start to, uh, well, have seen better days as I would say this one has. Now this, this is a gourmet mushroom, the wood blue. You might have eaten it in restaurants, they like the French names in restaurants, uh, so this one would be Pied Bleu in restaurants, Pied Bleu. Um, we call it the Wood Bluet, Bluet being an old British name, or old British word for blue, all because of the coloration. So pretty striking mushroom. There is a mushroom to be careful of when you're picking Wood Bluets. As I say, this grows in woodland and so does the Cortinarius purpureus and a couple of other Cortinarius uh, mushrooms. Now, there's a big difference between this and the Cortinarius when they're young. First of all, you can see this little mushroom here and even this younger one here is not attached to the stem in any way. That's important. This makes me confident when I'm picking wood bluets when I see a little baby like this. Because the Cortinarius would, uh, well, they grow from an egg and uh, the cap would burst through that egg and it'd still be attached to the egg and the stem with a kind of web-like structure. The Cortinarius are uh, known as the web cap family because of the web-like structure that attaches the cap when young to the stem. So these young ones make me confident when I'm cooking, wood, uh, well, picking wood bluets rather. This is another member of the bluet family. This one, again, you'll find in restaurants. They'll call it Pied Violette. We call this one the field bluet. Alfie's trying to roll on top of them at the moment. Get out of it, you. <laughs> um, now, we call this one the field bluet, grows in fields. This is the wood bluet, grows in the woods. There's actually one still in the ring just down here. So if you follow my finger, I'll pick this and show you. And get the stem up. Why I think this is a much safer mushroom to pick. There's nothing really that grows in fields that will have this beautiful lilac colour on the stem. It doesn't have the same sort of lilac effect on the gills and it's a kind of tanny brown sort of cap. But this, Pied Violette, it's violet foot, really gives the field bluet away. Makes it a really, really safe mushroom to pick. Both of these mushrooms in the bluet family need to be cooked. Don't eat them raw. They can, um, even when cooked, cause an allergic reaction in some people, I mean very, very few. These mushrooms still get served in restaurants, but never raw, only cooked. Both of them are around uh, normally from early October, and we've picked both of these mushrooms on Christmas Day for the last few years um, on the trot. So it's a mushroom that will go right into winter. I think I picked my last blue in very late January this year. Um, so a lovely mushroom that lasts through winter. Over here we've got a mushroom that grows at the same time of year as both of these bluets. And you can see that, uh, if we find that faded one, but from a distance, because these grow in woodland as well, we uh, often mistake the wood bluet for this one, the uh, Clytocybe nebularis, or the clouded agaric. Now this mushroom, it's got different gills. The gills, as you can see, run down the stem a little bit. Whereas with both of the actual bluets, which have been put in the Clytocybe family, don't know why, that's down to the index fungorium and people that make the rules in the mycology world, but the gills are very different. The gills with the bluet attached to the stem and go up towards the cap. The gills with the clouded agaric 
run down the stem. It's also white, you know, you always get these white stem, white gills, so that's your key giveaway. Both of these will always have the lilac on them. The cloud in the garrick is a really interesting mushroom for foragers. We, uh, we run lots of courses in foraging all over the country, and in Cardiff one day, uh, we found a load of cloud in the garricks. We told everyone in the group that 50% of people, roughly, according to what we've always read, get a little bit sick from eating the cloud in the garrick. Now, fully armed with that knowledge, one brave Welshman decided he was going to take some and eat them and test it out. He said that the mushrooms were really, really tasty and he didn't get any ill effect from them whatsoever. Now, that sort of spurred me and Eric on. We couldn't have one of the customers doing that without us having a go ourselves, so we then tried some. Uh, both of us now eat the cloud at Agaric happily. Uh, I've got one other friend, Danny Casey, uh, who ate the mushroom with us and uh, he felt no ill effect either. So that was none out of four. Statistically though, I believe we were lucky. People do get ill eating the clouded agaric. All three of these mushrooms are lovely late autumn mushrooms. They're the sort of mushrooms to be looking for in the woods and fields right now. Um, if you want to find out any more about them, please come on one of our courses or go to www.wildfooduk.com.